As Eli Ortiz walks through the Arizona desert, searching for lost migrants, he recalls his dead brother, Rigoberto. Rigoberto went missing while he was trying to enter the U.S. illegally in 2009. His coyote, or human smuggler, confessed he'd abandoned Rigoberto on his last breaths. Yo me ponía a pensar, mi hermano, ¿dónde está? ¿Qué le pasó? ¿De qué manera murió? Mil ideas que se me pasaban por la cabeza. Y yo de mí me propuse, no voy a dejar tirado a mi hermano. Ortiz called the Mexican consulates, border patrol, and other agencies. Yo pedí ayuda a todos y nadie me brindaba ayuda. So he went out into the desert himself with the help of a human rights activist named Rafael Hernández. Together, they found his brother's body. It was closure for the Ortiz family. Los familiares la captaron mal. Inspired, Ortiz launched Águilas del Desierto, or Eagles of the Desert, a nonprofit that searches for migrants who go missing along the border. He chose the name Águilas because of the eagle's powerful eyesight and wingspan. Sometimes the group rescues migrants. Most of the time, the Águilas are recovering their remains. Que sus familiares se les acabe esa incertidumbre de que no van, que dónde estará mi familiar, que qué le pasó a mi familiar. Entonces darle esa paz a ellos. On weekdays, Ortiz takes care of North County's verdant avocado farms, a contrast to the dry desert of his weekends. He makes sure the irrigation system is working and that the trees are flourishing. Me gusta mucho, me gusta mucho andar entre los árboles, la naturaleza. Ortiz migrated here from Oaxaca, Mexico's second poorest state. He lives in Fallbrook with his wife and four U.S. citizen daughters. All four of his daughters are university graduates or college bound. In his living room, Ortiz listens to messages from the families of missing migrants. Ortiz uses Google Earth to get an idea of where the missing might be, using whatever information the family has. If he's lucky, he has a landmark, a mountain range or an arroyo. Sometimes all he knows is where the migrant's journey started. When Ortiz leaves for a search, he stops in front of his brother's picture and prays. Cada llamada que que yo recibo, cada reporte que yo recibo, vuelvo a sentir lo mismo, vuelvo a vivir lo mismo, vuelvo a recordar lo mismo. Pues lo tenemos que hacer. Alguien lo tiene que hacer. The death started in the 1990s, when the U.S. launched its first major border fencing project, focusing on cities. This funneled migrants into remote, dangerous border crossing routes. Thousands began to die in the desert of dehydration or hypothermia. Diario se pierde gente, diario se encuentran cuerpos, diario pasa todo esto. Ortiz tells me he blames the border fence for the deaths. Pero fue, fue política de Estados Unidos. Fue política de venir cerrándole la frontera y, y obligarlos a cruzar en los lugares más peligrosos. And we're gonna build a wall, a wall. We're gonna build a wall. President-elect Donald Trump has vowed to expand current fencing. This is pretty inexpensive material to, to build a fence. Sean Moran of the National Border Patrol Council supports Trump's wall, but he says geography will make it impossible to seal off the entire border. There are some areas that you cannot build a fence. It's just the, the grade is too steep. Uh, or the, the water table is too high. Either way, he doesn't think a wall will stop the illegal flow of migrants or their deaths. If we build a 20-foot wall, they will build a 21-foot ladder and they will try to get in. Uh, but until we have good policies that, that shut down uh, people hiring illegal aliens in this country, we are not going to be able to shut down that, that flow. Ortiz believes Trump's signature wall will increase border crossing deaths. Already, people are rushing to cross the border before Trump's term begins. Some are dying on the way. Madres me hablan llorando y a mí se me parte el alma, se me parte el alma de de que te piden, te piden ayuda. Prácticamente eres su última esperanza. Despite everything Ortiz has accomplished in the U.S., he dreams of moving back to Mexico. In the U.S., he feels discrimination. At the border, he says he can see it and smell it and touch it. In the human remains scattered across the desert. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News.